Hey, let's have some fun taking a look at applications of systems of equations and see that they're really useful in our everyday lives. Here's the first fun one, which involves sort of recreating. So Ben paddles his kayak 12 miles upstream in four hours. He turns around and paddles down to his starting point in only one hour. What is the rate at which Ben paddles in still water? And then the second part is, what is the rate of the river's current? Now, what's going on here? Why is it taking a different amount of time going up than down? Well, going up means that, in fact, Ben is sort of bucking the current. You see, the current is pushing him this way, and he's fighting the current. So he has to go so fast just to, first of all, just stay where he is, because the current will put him down. Then he has to go faster to actually move forward. You follow me? Now, when he comes back, though, well, now the current is his friend, and is going to push him along. If he does nothing, he's going to actually move at a good clip. But then when he starts paddling, he even moves faster. That's why he's going to return downstream at a faster length of time, even though it was the same distance as he did upstream. So we can actually figure this out by creating all the facts together and producing a system of equations. Let's think about it together. We have the upstream leg and the downstream leg. I'm going to let the variable b, the unknown b, represent Ben's rate. And I'm going to let C represent the rate of the current, the rate of the current of the water. So when Ben goes upstream, what is his, his actual rate? Well, his actual rate is going to be what? Well, his rate, Ben, but we have to subtract off the current because he's fighting the current. So his rate is going to be slower, right? It's a smaller number. So it's going to be B minus C. Ben's rate minus the current's rate. He's fighting it. He's fighting it. He's fighting it. What about his rate when he goes downstream? Well, now the current is his friend. He actually gets the current as extra speed. So not only does he go Ben's speed in still water, but he actually gets to increase that by the actual current. So in that case, the downstream, his rate is B plus C. OK, cool. Now we take the time. For upstream, it took him four hours. For downstream, he did it in a quick one hour. And what's the distance? Well, the distance in both cases, we told, we're told, is 12. 12 miles. So how do we put these together? Well, we know that if you take the rate and multiply it by the time, you're going to get the distance. So if I multiply here, then these are going to give me two equations. And so if I write that out now, what I see is I could convert all this information to the following two fun, zany, crazy equations. The first one is going to be 4 multiplied by the quantity b minus c equals 12. That's the upstream equation. And then the downstream equation is going to be very similar. It's going to be just 1 multiplied by b plus c equals 12. So this is my system of equations that I want to solve. And when I figure out what b equals, that's going to be Ben's rate in still water. And c actually will represent the rate of the current. Cool. So we want to solve this. And I'm going to solve this by the technique of elimination, which means that I want to eliminate one variable. So we have to do some stuff to this. Let's first of all distribute the 4 in the top equation. And if we distribute that 4 to the b and to the c, what we see here is 4b minus 4c equals 12. And then here, I just have the simple equation, well, 1 times anything is the anything. So I have b plus c equals 12. And so what I'll do here to try to eliminate one of the variables is I'll multiply this second equation entirely through by 4. That means I'm going to multiply the b by 4, the c by 4, and the 12 by 4 to keep everything balanced. If I multiply the left-hand side by 12, uh, by 4, I multiply the right-hand side by 4. And why? Well, because when I have a 4 everywhere, notice that if I took the two equations, visualize 4s here, when I would add them together, I would eliminate the c. Because I'd have a negative 4c plus 4c, and that would eliminate the c. That's why I picked 4. So let's take a look at what we get now. Our new system, which was originally this, now it's this, is going to become the following. 4b minus 4c equals 12. And now when I multiply the second equation through by 4, I'm going to get 4b plus 4c equals 4 times 12, which is going to be 48. And now that's my 
new version of the system, but I'm going to take that version and just add the two equations together. And when I add, notice that I actually eliminate the 4c and the minus 4c. So I'm left with, so I'm going to add here, this is addition, adding these two together. So 4b plus 4b is 8b plus 0, I eliminated the c, equals, and 12 plus 48 is in fact 60. I can now undo the multiplication by 8 in front of the b by dividing this side by 8 and this side by 8. And in doing so, I'm just going to get b alone. And I'm going to see that b, this tells me that b equals 60 divided by 8, which actually reduces to 15 divided by 2, which is 7.5. And the units here, by the way, are miles per hour. So this is miles per hour. So Ben's rate in still water with no current is 7.5 miles per hour. How would we now go about finding the current's rate? Well, we can go back to any of these equations and just substitute the b value and solve for the c. I'll pick this one because it seems like the easiest one. So I'll take this equation right here. And for b, I'm going to put in 7.5 plus c equals 12. And now if I subtract 7.5 from both sides, what I see is c equals 12 minus 7.5, which is 4.5. And again, the units are miles per hour. And so I see what the current is. It's 4.5 miles per hour. And I see what Ben's rate is. It's 7.5 miles per hour. And we actually use the elimination technique to actually figure out these two velocities by setting up a system of equations. Cool.